Hey everybody, <clears throat> welcome, welcome to March 14th Money Management Lunch and Learn. <clears throat> I'm sorry for um, the delay, I had a little bit of connection issues, so I apologize. Hopefully this, hopefully you guys can, um, I'm coming through, you guys can hear me, hopefully. Hang on, I'm going to get my water. Since I'm going to be sharing so much with you ladies today about money management. So, oh, sorry, I'm drooling. Okay, um, so I wanted to come to you guys. I have some notes I'm going to be looking down at, but I wanted to come with two ladies today um, and talk about money management. Um, it looks like one, two people are here so far. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Um, I have my dishwasher running in the back. So I wanted to make sure you guys could hear me. If you guys can just post below and say, give me a thumbs up or say yes, loud and clear. Or if I need to move to a different location, let me know. Do I look like I have a halo back here with my mirror? I just realized that. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you for the thumbs up, ladies. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so I just wanted to start off and say I am super excited to, thanks, Sarah. Um, I'm super excited to um, share with you guys about money management because it's one of my favorite things to talk about in this business because kind of much like Chris Chickenelli feels, um, his one of his goals is much like my goal to help you ladies make sure not only are you partying and having fun, but that you're making money and you're taking care of yourself and you're taking care of your family because after all, that's why majority of us got into this business. And, you know, here's the deal, you know, some people are like, oh, I didn't get into this to make money. I got into this, you know, um, to do this or that or whatever. It's not about the money. But most, most oftentimes money can um, make things easier for you. Even though you didn't do it for the money, you're doing it because you, what the money can do for you and your family. And, um, you know, one of the biggest reasons that women get out of this business is they don't see the money that they're making. And I want to make sure today, by the end of this call, by the end of this lunch and learn, that you guys know how to see the money that you are making. Because it's super important, super, super important. Because if you're just spinning your wheels and not feel like you're making any money, then that is no fun. So, all right, um, I'm going to start off, and I'm just going to talk about party profits, okay? Because so many of you um, don't know how much money you're making. Um, and it's really, really simple. I don't want to overcomplicate this. I remember I sat in a room one time years ago at Pyramid's corporate office with Chris Ciccinelli and about 20 other top consultants in the company who were money people. And hours we sat in this room trying to come up with this party profit sheet to make it so everybody could do it, it would work for everybody. And I'm telling you, after hours, they ended up strolling in alcohol because we were so brain fried. And what we realized is everybody does it so differently. So I'm gonna keep it really, really simple for you. And what I call it is KISS, you know, keep it simple, Sally, K-I-S-S. -S. Don't get caught up in the minute details when you are figuring out your party profits, okay? So for instance, I mean, it's really simple. It's money in, money out, okay? So for instance, let's say you're at a 45% buying discount, okay? And you go have a $1,000 party. You go have a $1,000 party, your profit is $450. Done. That's how much money you made. The rest of the money, the 550, goes to replenish your inventory, okay? Let's say you have a $500 party at a 45% buying discount. Uh, that's a $225 profit. Let's say you have a $750 party at a 45% buying discount. That's a $337.50 profit. And all you have to do, ladies, is take, let's say, $500, if that was your party average, or party total, take $500, multiply it by 0.45, whatever your buying discount is. So if your buying discount is 40%, you multiply it by 0 0.40. If it's 45, you 0.45. If it's 50, it's super easy. If you're at a 50% buying discount, you know, you have a $1,000 party, bam, $500 is your party profit, okay? Now, some of you are going, well, that's great, but how do I do that? Well, if you're using Pure Sale, it'll do it for you, which is fantastic. So hopefully all of you are using Pure Sale. And, um, and it just came out for Android. Woo -woo. Um, so, but if you are using order forms, it's totally fine too. All you have to do is take the order forms and add up just the subtotal. 
Um, I know this may be um, elementary for some of you on the call, but I got to remember, you know, a lot of us are different levels and maybe have never been doing this right. Um, so all you do is add up this subtotal, not the tax and shipping, okay? Not the tax and shipping, add up this subtotal, and all you have to do is um, take that subtotal and multiply it by 0.45 or 0.40 or 50%, and there, you know your average. Sarah, if it's not in the Android store yet, it should be. I got an email about it like last week, I think, so I'll, I'll take a look at that, but... Um, it's that easy. You just don't want to include tax and shipping because that's a wash, okay? That is a complete wash. So don't get caught up in the tax and the shipping and all of that because that's just money in, money out. It's a complete wash, okay? So keep that in mind when you are figuring out because you need to know how much you are getting paid. You absolutely need to know. Um, and you need to be paying yourself. So with that said, let's talk about paying yourself and let's talk about... Um, and try to how to uh, build your inventory because that's one of the things that I said I would chat about. So ladies, when it comes to your inventory, if you are brand new, um, you're probably sitting here thinking, okay, well, I've shadowed so-and-so or I've shadowed my sponsor or you shadowed me or whatever, and you see all this inventory that we have. Well, what that means, ladies, hang on, I'm gonna, I gotta plug something in really quickly. Hang on, bear with me. So if you, um, oh, jeez, death by Legos, ah, step on a Lego. Um, so if you uh, <coughs> are brand new in the business and you're like, okay, I need to build up my inventory, I need to figure this out, um, this is what I would recommend for you to do at the beginning. And even if you're not brand new and maybe you've had some things come up in your life and you've depleted your inventory, this is what you need to do. I would recommend that you take a third. A third, a third, a third, okay? So just for easy numbers, I'm gonna say, let's say you've had a $1,000 party, okay? And I'm gonna divide that by three. So what you would do is you would take $333 and put it in your pocket. That is your profit. Take $333 and put it towards replenishing your inventory and $333 and put it towards adding inventory. So basically you would take $666 and put it towards what you sold plus any additional few items you want to add. And if you do that and you're having a consistent party schedule, we'll talk about that in a minute, um, your, your inventory is slowly going to grow and build. Obviously, you want to take advantage of sales. You want to take advantage of when they offer like, hey, you get free blah, blah, blah. When you have this amount of order, take advantage of that. Definitely want to take advantage when they offer 15% off, 10% off, and take advantage of when they do $26.50 shipping because that's the lowest shipping we can get. So, I mean, if you have a big order you got to put in, ladies, and again, we're going to talk about how to make money on shipping, but this is one way. Take advantage of these shipping sales. But if you're sitting here beating your head against the wall going, oh my gosh, how can I build my inventory? Try the third rule. A third, a third, a third. A third in your pocket, a third for, um, to replenish, and a third to build your inventory. And that should help you get to where you want to be quicker and have that inventory on hand. Because when you have the inventory on hand, ladies, you're going to have higher party, party, higher party sales, uh, more consistent bookings. Because if I come into a party and I have inventory and you come into a party and you don't, who do you think they're going to want to rebook with? Right? So who do you think you're going to remember? Like, Because I've walked into so many parties where women say, oh, yeah, I've been to a party before, but she didn't have anything for us to take home. Not saying that's a bad thing. But make it a goal of yours to get to the point where you can be that consultant that is giving them things to take home that day. So a third, a third, a third. Now, another thing I wanted to chat with you ladies about when it comes to money is payroll. Now, I have talked to a couple ladies about this on the team, um, and a few ladies know that I do this, but when it comes to um, payroll accounts. I have a payroll account. What that means is it's just in my head a payroll. It doesn't mean that I have a payroll company cutting me a check every month, every week or every month or anything like that. Basically what I do, ladies, is I figure out my profit from my parties. I transfer it to a payroll account and I pay myself once a week. So let's say I have a, a, a slam in week of parties and my profit is like $1,500. <laughs> it is the best thing ever, Jessica. Yes, Jessica and I have talked about this. 
So let's say I have a, a slam a week of parties and my profit for the week is like $1,500, okay? So let's say I had $3,000 parties and I'm at a 50% buying discount, so $1,500 was my profit. I take all that money and I dump it into my payroll account. And then once a week, I pay myself whatever it is I've decided that I want to pay myself every week. So what I'm going to recommend that you do, if this is something that you want to do, I can't read all of your thing, Jennifer, hang on, I'll look online. When you first got started, I said that I had a really big party the night before and they wiped me out until I was able to build my inventory. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so this is my story and I'm going to tell you my story because I, I like to tell true stories about myself because I'm living, breathing this business just like you ladies are. So a couple years ago, I looked at my husband and we were spending money way too much. We were spending way too much money and I said, look, we make too much money to not be in control of our money. And I feel like we're just at the end of every month kind of scrambling to pay off this American Express bill because we would just use our American Express for everything. And I could see it slowly getting out of control as credit can do sometimes for us. So I said, that's it. This is what's going to happen. And I set up a payroll account. And I told my husband, I said, look, I want a certain amount of money in this account by the end of the year. And I think this was like October couple years ago. I said, I want a certain amount of money in this account by the end of the year and come January 1st, I'm going to start paying myself consistently, excuse me, the same amount of money every single week. No matter if I have 10 parties a week or two parties a week or zero parties a week, I'm going to pay myself the exact same amount and budget, put us on a budget, right? Budgets aren't fun, but they're necessary. So that's what I did. So I figured out how many parties I needed um, from that point till the end of the year and how much I was going to put in. You know, basically I was putting all my profit into this account because I was using my Amex for everything. Not that that's the right answer, but that's how I could get myself out of it. Now, if you're sitting here and working a full-time job, you're in an actually much better position because you have income coming in. So if you have the flexibility to have income coming in from another source, which a lot of our team does have another job, use that income to pay your bills, to live your lifestyle, to pay your bills. Use your pyramids income, at least until whatever your deadline give, you, know, you give yourself, to create your payroll account and just dump all of your profits into this payroll account. Not your, you know, not your retail, because you gotta you know, replenish your stock, but dump your profit, okay? And but before you know it, you're gonna have a payroll account built up, but have a number in your mind of what you want to be comfortable. And I'll tell you mine. Mine was 6000 I told my husband, I said, I want $6,000 sitting in a payroll account. Done. Okay? So, uh, by the end of the year. So that's what I did. I did. I figured out how many parties I needed and how much I wanted to put in this payroll account between that time and the end of the year and said, okay, I got to do this many parties a month. I got to put this much, no matter what the party is, I got to put this much money into the pay into that payroll account. And if I do the work I need to do, the payroll account will be funded. So I had to fund that. <clears throat> now, then the cool thing was that I become January 1st, we put away the Amex, we did not use it anymore. My husband gets paid on a Friday and I paid myself every Friday. So every Friday, he gets money in our joint account, I get money in our joint account, and there you have it, right? So that's how we live. That's how we do our thing. And then I use my override to pay some of our bigger bills, like, you know, our um, mortgage and stuff like that. But that's going deep, way deeper than you probably need to. So, um, so that's how you set up a payroll account. And literally, I pay myself the exact same amount every single week. Every week, I pay myself. Um, that way, ladies, it removed the stress for me. It removed the stress and the pressure that I was feeling like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I don't have a party. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I knew I was going to have the money. Now, here's the other thing I want to tell you. Some of you guys have been around a long, long enough to remember this, but um, not quite two years ago, I lost my father in um, on June 15th, 2015. And... It was so weird because beginning of 2015 is when I set up the payroll account. So January 2015 is when I started taking a payroll, right? I, so, Janu uh, so fall 2014 is when I decided I wanted to do this. 
I don't know if you guys believe in signs or not, but I feel like, you know, that might have been the universe telling me this is what I need to do. Because when my father passed away, I took three or four weeks off. I think about four weeks off. And I didn't stress. I did not stress. I got to be with my family. I got to grieve. I got to go through what I needed to go through. Not that it only takes four weeks, but I got to go through... Um, sorry. I got to go through what I needed to go through and step away from parties and step away and, you know, take time to do what I wanted to do and not stress about finances. So that's the great thing a payroll accountant can do for you because it allows you to take time if you need to and not stress. And that's the thing about me. I like to not stress. I like to feel safe. And the way I feel safe is when I'm financially stable. That's safety for me. Again, it's different for everybody, but that's safety for me. That's why this means so much to me. So if you guys need more in-depth things, um, questions answered about the payroll account, you can post below maybe at the end, or I'll be happy to answer more questions um, later for you. So um, let's talk a minute about um, shipping. So another way you can manage your money is to... Um, make money on shipping. So like I was saying briefly earlier, you want to make sure you're taking advantage of the shipping days that are $26.50. Um, and more than that, because I, you know, they only happen every so often, but more than that, obviously you want to make sure you're charging everyone the $7 for shipping. Okay. If you are not, we need to change that. And I'll tell you what I say at my parties. Okay. But you want to make sure you're charging every single person, whether you have the inventory or not. You're going to start making money, making money on shipping when you carry inventory because you're not going to have to turn around and ship anything else out. So you're going to save money there. And what I've done, and I've done a, I've done a live video on this recently, but I will tell you 99%, 95% of the time when I place an order, what I do in my iPad is I look and I go, okay, when was the last time I placed an order? I placed an order this day. So... From that day to today's day, I see, look and see everything that I've sold. So then I go in the COO and I literally just sit and place an order um, for the, you know, between this date and this date from when I, you know, last time I placed an order till today and I order everything that I had sold, right? I will tell you majority of the time, if not all the time, what I took in for shipping was more than what I'm paying for shipping to have corporate ship it to me, Okay. But there are key things to this. Again, it goes back to a consistent party schedule. You want to be consistently partying, okay, for this to work effectively. So, and that could be one a week. That could be two a week. That could be whatever you need it to be, but consistently partying, okay, to make this work effectively. Um, but I make money on shipping, one, because I carry inventory, and two, because I'm charging everybody and I'm paying less to have it shipped to me. And when you have those 2650 dollars I mean, oh my gosh. I remember years ago, um, I did a flash sale. I placed an $11,000 order and paid $19 shipping because back then it was $19 shipping flat. I mean, that's stupid money, right? So make sure you are taking advantage, grouping your parties together. And when you're, when you're booking parties, book parties close together. Like don't book a party, you know, this month and then two weeks later book, an, this week and then two weeks later book another party and then a week later book another. Like if your goal is to do four parties a month, do three in a weekend, right? Or do a Thursday, Friday, and two on Saturday. Bam, there are your four for the month. You can lump all that into one order and you're good to go. You're making money on shipping. You've hit your goal. You've achieved what you need to achieve and you're good right? Or you, let's say your party, is, you, you want to do six parties a month. Do three one weekend, three another weekend. So when you're, you know, booking these parties, calendar control, ladies. It's called calendar control. Hang on, I gotta plug my phone in. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So just a couple of hints there to make sure you are making money on shipping. Okay, so this is what I say at the end of every party, because when I was early on in the business 10 years ago, um, and probably for the first couple of years of my business, I was afraid to mention shipping. So I never mentioned it. I didn't even talk about it. But then what would happen is I would get so irritated because I get these emails after the party. Hey, Corinne, I paid $7 for, or back then it was 5 or $6 um, for shipping and I got all my stuff. So why, why am I paying shipping? And I had to spend time sending emails all the time after my parties explaining 
why they paid shipping. So this is what I say at the end of every party, and I would recommend that you do. So at the very, very end, I thank the hostess again, and I say, hey, ladies, I'm like, so um, when you come in the shopping room, if you can please make sure you bring your folders, your wish list, your catalogs, everything, bring all of that in. The folders come back to me, but you get to keep everything else. Um, also, ladies, I'm going to be emailing your receipt to you immediately from my iPad um, at the end of um, the, shipping, uh, the shopping experience. I'm going to be emailing your receipt to you immediately. And also, on the bottom of every receipt, ladies, there is a $7 shipping and handling fee. Now, the reason that that is there is because I've already paid the shipping for you, and you get the luxury of taking it home tonight without having to wait two weeks for it. Now, if I run out of something and I have to ship something for you, I absorb that cost, that's on me. You don't pay any extra. So whether you spend $20 or $250, you only pay seven. Does that make sense? That's exactly what I say. And they all go, yeah, that makes sense. And what I'm doing, ladies, is I'm starting off and I'm saying, you know, hey, um, you know, you're paying $7 for shipping and they go, right? They have this level like, well, that stinks. But then I follow it up and I end it with a positive and I make it sound like I'm doing them a favor because I say, ladies, if I run out of something and I have to send something to you, that's on me. I absorb that cost. You don't pay any extra. So I make it a positive at the end, right? So they're leaving going, oh, well, that's nice. She absorbs that cost, which most likely I don't absorb that cost because I don't have anything to ship. <laughs> So keep that in mind, but I definitely address it at the end of every single party. So everybody's on the same page and um, there's no questions afterwards. And then they don't feel like, you're, you know, that you're taking advantage of them either. Um, so um, one of the things that I definitely wanted to talk about, um, I'm going to bring this up because I brought it up. One of the things that I wanted to talk about, because I said in... Um, I said in the event that I was going to talk to you about how much money you should be saving for you and your family, because I feel like that's really important too. Um, I'm a big fan of David Bach. If you guys know who that is, David Bach has spoken with Pure Romance several times at our um, conventions and events, and he's amazing. Um, he, I am not a huge reader, but I read his last book that he gave to us or that Chris, you know, enabled him to to give to us. Um, it's called The Automatic Millionaire. I would highly recommend it if anybody here wants to know what to do, what to save more in depth than what I'm about to tell you, um, and how to be an automatic millionaire for sure. So it's a phenomenal book. I read it in like three days and it, I mean, I put it all into action and it's done. Um, so, but I will tell you, I brought up this little chart actually on David Box. um, well, it's on businessinsider.com. Um, so if it says kind of how much you should be saving in every decade of life, right? So if you're on this call right now and you're in your 20s, you should be saving 10% of your gross income, okay? That's like should be your retirement savings, 10% of your gross income. And then your emergency reserve is at least three months of expenses. So if you don't have an emergency reserve, I would highly recommend, recommend making that a goal of yours. A lot of the financial people, like the Susie Ormans and, um, oh gosh, who's that guy that uh, wants you to pay cash for everything and put in an envelope? Oh my gosh, what's his name? I can't remember. Post his name below. What's his name? Um, oh. Dave Ramsey. That's it. Sorry. Nobody helps me out. <laughs> Dave Ramsey. So the Dave Ramsey's, the Susie Ormans, a lot of them will say that you need at least a thousand dollars sitting in the bank. God forbid you have an emergency, even before you pay off credit card debt, put, um, you know, put that. Thank you, Alyssa. David, <laughs> Dave Ramsey. Yes. Um, put that money in emergency. Yes. Now everybody, I guess, cause there's a delay. <laughs> Um, so you want to have at least a thousand and then before, and then once you get that a thousand, that, that thousand in your twenties, you want to have at least three months, um, worth of expenses saved. Um, and so all you have to do is add up all of your bills and figure out how much, if you had no job and no money coming in, what would you need to support yourself? That's your three months worth of expenses. Now, if you're sitting on this call in your thirties, you want for retirement, you want to be saving 12 and a half percent of your gross income. Okay. 12 and a half percent of your gross income and then three to six months expenses in your emergency reserve. If you are in your forties, which 
I'm close to it. <laughs> if you're in your 40s on this call, you want to be saving 15% of your gross income and you want 6 to 12 months of expenses saved. And if you're in your 50s, 20% or more of your gross income and 12 to 24 months of expenses. And I don't think anybody on this call is in their 60s, but anyway, it goes up. But the reason that you want, it's best to have um, more in your emergency the reserve the older you get is because it's typically, typically the older you, um, the older you get, the more you spend and the more you earn. So you want to make sure, and if you lose your job, you know, in your 50s, it's going to be a little bit harder to replace that if you're working um, a 9 to 5, but we don't have to worry about that if you're doing this full time. So um, I just wanted to make sure you knew, um, and it's this little graphic here, I'll show it to you. Um, see, there's this little graphic how much you, be, you should be saving in every decade. Um, so this is a good rule of thumb. what to do, what you should be saving, because, you know, we are in a business where we don't have the luxury of getting a two-week steady paycheck, but when we do get paid, we oftentimes get paid a lot more than someone making a two-week paycheck, paycheck, right? Especially if you're building and growing a team. I mean, Ashley Strother, goodness gracious, do you want to share your override from last month? Woo! She had the highest override on the team last, that she got paid this month. Um, because you, it's just stupid money. So if you're not building a team, I would highly recommend you would do that. I'm sure Ashley would echo, um, echo that. <laughs> but I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I didn't want this to be so overwhelming where your eyes glazed over. You know, sometimes my eyes will glaze over. I was just with my financial advisor this week and she was talking all kinds of investments and mutual funds. And I'm just like, Right? That's why I'm my husband. But I wanted to give you guys a basic knowledge of what you should be doing. So just to recap, okay, and if you guys have questions, you can start posting them below. Um, just to recap, figure out your party profits and make sure you're, you are paying yourself. Keep it simple, Sally. K kiss. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, Sally. Don't get, up, don't get caught up in the minute details. Just make sure you are, you know, paying yourself, Okay transferring money from your business account to your to your personal account or if you decide to set up a payroll account like we talked about make sure you are paying yourself make sure you are building inventory um, the rule I told you on that to start off especially if you're brand new or even if you're not brand new is a third a third a third a third put in your pocket a third to replace replenish your what you sold and a third to build your inventory um, we talked about the payroll account we talked about how to set that up, have a goal in mind, what do you want? And I would recommend doing that um, also, you know, if you're sitting here going, well, I don't know how much money I need in a payroll account. Like, where do I, where do I pull this number from? Look at your monthly expenses and let's say it takes you $2,000 a month to live. I don't know. So let's say if it takes you $2,000 a month to live, um, you could do, hey, I want... Um, I want three months worth of expenses in an account. Like, so then you would have 6,000, right? That's what would be your goal. Because you gotta think, you know, what if you got sick and you couldn't do parties or you got in a car accident and you couldn't go to a party for a month or whatever, you know, things happen. You get pregnant. <laughs> That's happened to me twice. Um, so anyway, um, what else did we talk about? How to make money on shipping, taking advantage of sales, taking advantage of the uh, 2650 shipping. And then what I say at the end of every single party um, to address the shipping, to address the shipping um, question. And then how much to save? I just showed you the little graphic. So um, with that, that's kind of everything I wanted to cover that what we talked about when it comes to money management. But at the end of the day, pay yourself first. Pay yourself. I mean, that's what David Box says. I told you I'm, I'm a big fan of his. Pay yourself first. Um, you know, I have money immediately coming off of my override that I don't ever see. I don't ever touch. It immediately goes into my retirement. I don't see it. I have money that also goes into a fun account. I have money that also goes into an emergency reserve account. So let me talk about that for a minute. Um, so from my override, if you're getting paid an override, you can, you know, I get it automatically deposited into my account. And I told corporate and I filled out some paperwork and I said, I want this amount going into my, into my retirement. And I got 
and my financial advisor knows it's coming in every single month on the 10th. Um, I also have in my um, credit union, I have a credit union that's separate from my regular bank because I can't get to it. Um, I mean, I can't get to it, but I have to get in the car, physically go over there, drive, you know, get the money out. Um, so I have um, a certain amount of money every month going into our emergency reserve account, as does my husband, automatically. Uh, it's all from the Automatic Millionaire, the book I read I told you about. And then I have a certain amount of money, a little bit, not a huge chunk. I think I have like 50 bucks out of my, uh, my override going into our fun account. And my husband has money going into our fun account every week as well. So it's just going into my fun account, and that is basically for us to go on vacation. You know, um, I'm going to spring break um, April 1st. <laughs> I'm going to spring break, and I just sent a $1,000 check to the lady, and all I did was go to my um, credit union, pull it out of my fun account, and it was done. I didn't have to stress about it, right? Um, so just some little tips and hints to make your life easier when it comes to money management. But I would highly recommend you picking up David Bach's book, The Automatic Millionaire. Um, you can get it on audiobook, I'm sure. Also, if you are in a um, relationship, my husband and I, on the way um, to vacation one year, we sat in the car and we listened um, to the audiobook, um, Smart Couples Finish Rich and Set Goals Together. So that's another option and thought as well. So. Anyway, does anybody have any questions? Nobody is posting any questions. Does anybody have any money management questions? Anything they are um, worried about or concerned about or confused about when it comes to managing your money? Anyone? 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 Oh, thanks for the heart. Thanks for the heart, Heather. I'll wait a minute because I know there is a delay. But if anybody has questions, now is the time. No? Okay. Well, ladies, um, we got done early today, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> if anybody needs anything moving forward, let me know. Um, if you have any questions about anything I talked about, you know, you can shoot me a private message on Facebook or, you know, text me, box me, whatever you want to do. But otherwise, ladies, Get out there, manage your money effectively, and I will echo this again at the very end. Um, all of this works beautifully when you have a consistent party schedule. It all comes down to a consistent party schedule. It all works like a very well-oiled machine. And I say this all the time, and I will say it again, nobody ever gets out of this business with a consistent party schedule, with a full calendar. No one ever gets out of this business with a full calendar. It doesn't happen. So. All you have to do is keep putting it out there, keep getting parties on the schedule, keep pushing forward, set your goals, and rock and roll, girls. I'm super proud of all of you. We are um, doing great as a team for the year so far. Again, if you guys need anything, let me know. Hit me up. Um, I will see some of you down in Florida for World Conference next week. Super excited. And otherwise, I'm here if you need me, ladies. Thanks. Have a good day. Love you, girls.